Hi guys, I did another video um, a few days, actually yesterday, and it ended up being about 25 minutes long and it was way too long for the amount um, of information that I was trying to cover. It just took me a long time to actually do the experiment live on video, so I decided to not do it live and to just do a quick video afterwards and explain to you what I did so that you don't have to waste half of your afternoon watching a video about soil. So what I did is I took four different pots of the exact same size and put four different types of growing medium in them, watered them with the exact same amount of water, um, which thoroughly soaked them. I used about a quart each to make sure they were thoroughly soaked and drained out the bottom. Um, and then I measured how much evaporated off over the period of 24 hours from each of these different substrates. And the reason that matters um, is that a lot of people don't realize how much water soil holds and how much different types of soil hold and how, why people are often saying, oh, you should use pumice, etc. I get a lot of questions on how I can, quote, get away with watering as much as I do, um, and that is because of the potting mediums that I use. And um, when you're watching videos on YouTube and they're giving watering advice about using um, squirt bottles or, you know, spray bottles, syringes, things like that, um, it's great advice if you are using traditional cactus soil like this. But um, when you're using different mediums, um, it's not great advice and your plants actually prefer to be soaked, generally speaking, which is why I do that. But um, obviously in these four um, pots, there aren't any plants. And if you have plants in your pots, they're gonna absorb a lot of the water themselves over 24 um, hours. But I didn't want to have any plants because you can't know how much each one absorbs or anything like that. So to make it easy, I just went ahead and went with empty pots and all I'm measuring is how much naturally evaporates off of them in 24 hours and how much they absorbed initially. Because that tells you what kind of water your plants are sitting in over a long period of time. Like for lithops, for example, if they're planted in pumice, I soak them thoroughly and they are dry very quickly. Um, whereas with a cactus mix or potting soil type um, mixture, they will be wet. If I soaked them, they would be wet for days. And they continue, the lithops and, and any other succulents, but lithops is especially problematic, continue to absorb water as long as they are exposed to it. And they will burst because they just keep sucking it up and sucking it up because they, in their natural environments, they get very few rains. So when it does rain, they wanna absorb as much as they can quickly. And the material that they naturally grow in is very loose and gritty. So it all um, evaporates or runs through really quickly. So they have to be able to just suck as much as they can initially, um, but they do not do well sitting in moist soil. Now, um, what I did is weigh each of these before I watered them, and then like I said, I watered them with a quart of water each to make sure it was super soaked and let it all drain out. And then I weighed them initially. And so for the pumice, initially it absorbed two and three-fourths ounces of water. That's just initial, that's what stayed in the pot. After soaking it with a quart of water, it was, and this was warm water, which does usually absorb a little bit more, um, but it was, it had absorbed two and three fourths ounces right away. After three hours, it was down to an ounce and three fourths. After eight hours, it was down to an ounce and a half. And after 24 hours, it had, it had left in its pot um, about an ounce and an eighth worth of moisture. So in 24 hours, the pumice absorbed a total of two and three fourths ounce and it evaporated off in 24 hours, one and a half of that. So um, that gives you an idea that again, that's with no plants. If there was plants in it, they would be pulling more moisture out of it. But this pumice alone is um, one of the quickest um, drying and evaporating mixes that I've found, which is why people love it for lithops and conifidum, and all types of messemes, and to just mix in um, to help your soil drain more. All right, next we move to, this is the mix that I make myself. It's a mixture of pumice 
and um, I'm going to show you that this is what it looks like dry. It's a mixture of pumice and um, vermiculite and some coconut husk. I think this this batch had a bit of sand in it as well. And this is what it looks like wet. This is what I use for my epiphytes and other succulents that like a little bit more water, even Haworthia and stuff. Um, I don't use it for some of the other more dry loving um, plants. I use a bit a mixture that's a bit more heavy on the pumice. But this is a good, this is um, my basically comparable version to a store succulent mix. Um, and it's not comparable in that it's the same. <laughs> it's just what I make to use instead of a traditional um, succulent mix. And for this guy, initially out of the quart of water, it absorbed five and a half ounces. And three hours later, it was down to five ounces. So half an ounce had evaporated off. Eight hours later, we were down to four and an eighth, and 24 hours later, we were down to four. So in 24 hours, this particular pot evaporated an ounce and a half off. Um, so it evaporated about as much as the pumice here. However, it absorbed way, way more. So if your plants were sitting in this, they would be very wet. I mean, you, you poke your, this is very wet, not just a little bit, because there's still um, four ounces of water uh, trapped in here. Um, alrighty. So if your plants were sitting in it, they would just keep absorbing and keep absorbing, which for some plants, being slightly damp for a couple of days is just fine. Like for my epiphytes and stuff, that can be just fine. All right, we move to perlite, and this is where it gets a little bit more surprising. Um, now for me, this is the bottom of the bag um, that I used because I don't use perlite much, and so I had what was left of a bag sitting out there. So it's really fine. Usually perlite is bigger chunks and looks a bit more like the pumice here, but um, this was the bottom of the bag. And anytime something is finer, it has more surface area, so it's gonna absorb more water. And so um, this finer um, perlite is going to have absorbed a lot more water than if it was larger chunks. But we're going with what I have today. And I wanted to show how pumice, even though a lot of people think they're pretty much the same, um, perlite actually absorbs quite a lot more water than pumice does and dries out quite a bit slower. So initially, this lovely little pot of perlite absorbed six ounces of water, which is the most that we've had so far, even more than my cactus mix, um, which is kind of surprising. And um, after three hours, we were down to five and three fourths ounces. Eight hours later, we were five and a fourth. And 24 hours later, we're still at five and a fourth ounces. So the total evaporation in 24 hours on this was only three fourths of an ounce, which actually honestly kind of surprised me. Um, and I knew it would be slower because it was finer. I have never done um, this particular experiment with large perlite because it's not an ingredient that I use a ton of. It floats to the top every time I water and it drives me nuts. So I prefer uh, pumice. Um, but there you go. If you've been using perlite and um, still struggling with overwatering issues, I would suggest switching to pumice because perlite still um, doesn't evaporate off as quickly and it just holds more water, um, even, even the larger stuff. Not that much, but more. All right, and finally we get to this lovely pot of cactus soil from just the store. This is just a bag of whatever was available that was called cactus mix. And I want to show you just a little bit of this dry before I show it to you wet. You can see all of these chunks here are pumice, which is fantastic. The problem that I have with this soil is that most of the dirt looking stuff is bark, is either bigger or really fine ground up bark. And a lot of the succulents don't like a lot of organic material, which of course bark is. And um, bark, absorbs water and holds it a lot more than um, the porous rocks like um, volcanic rock and, and pumice and things like that. And I have found that succulent soils in the store tend to be very bark heavy usually and it I, I really don't know why that is. I think they're just being cheap, but um, it doesn't work very well. Um, 
the easier succulents that are happier and just tend to not be fussy do just fine, of course. But um, in general, I find that buying a regular potting mix a lot of times is better than buying a cactus potting mix. Um, and people may have a fit <laughs> when I say that, but that has been my experience, which I don't, I don't do either. I make my own um, now, but um, I have yet to find a cactus mix that I like. However, if you're doing a big arrangement and a whole bunch of plants are um, squished into a small area, you need a little bit more moisture holding um, soil than something like pumice because um, unless you're going to water, you know, every day, uh, which most people don't have the time for that, then um, having something like a traditional cactus soil can be totally fine. So I'm not, I am not um, ragging on the people who use that very successfully. I'm just saying for individual pots and um, succulent care, it tends to be less than ideal. All right, so for this pot, initially it absorbed six and a half ounces, which is the most of any of these. And um, three hours later, it was down to six and a fourth. Eight hours later, it was five and a half. And 24 hours later, it was still five and a half. So the total evaporation for this lovely pot in 24 hours was only an ounce. And it absorbed six and a half ounces. So that percentage wise compared to like the pumice that um, only originally absorbed two and three fourths and then evaporated an ounce and a half of that off, um, leaving just an ounce and a fourth that stayed, um, you can tell how drastic the difference is. And this alone, in my opinion, is why people have so much fits with watering, especially in the winter. In the summer, you know, these heavier mixes will dry out just fine with the warm weather. And we don't notice a lot of times that there's a problem because there really isn't in the summer. It's a lot of times only in the winter when the cool weather comes and instead of drying out in a couple days, it will take, you know, a couple weeks, especially if you have a bigger pot. I mean, this, these are four inch pots. And um, the larger of a pot you have, then the, the less it's likely to evaporate off, unless you have a lot of surface area on the top. If it's a really shallow pot, then you would, you would be um, in better luck. But if it was a pot like this, for example, um, a nice six inch pot or something, you can imagine the amount of water that that is gonna hold um, for days. Now I may come back and I'm gonna leave these guys all um, on the counter to evaporate off and I'm going to leave them for a couple of days and I may come back and give you a really quick update just to let you know how many days it took for them to dry out. However, after about 24 hours, I don't feel like it's super accurate because um, if you had a plant growing, you know, the plant would be absorbing and perspiring and helping the evaporation. So um, it it would take, it'll take a lot longer for this to dry completely out than it would if there was a plant in it. Um, that's for sure. But, um, that gives you a general idea of how different potting mixes can be and why it's really important to know your plant and what it needs and why the amount of evaporation that occurs is actually more important than how much you water it. So like I said, I watered each of these a quart, you know, and but a lot of it runs out and what matters is how much evaporates. I hope that was helpful. I hope this wasn't too confusing um, or geeky. I, I just have had so many people really confused about how one person can say water once a week and the next person can say water once a month. And um, there's so many factors that um, play into this, like environment and humidity levels in the air and sun and the type of plant and all of that. However, one of the biggest things is potting your potting mix. And so I just thought a quick experiment would be kind of helpful to um, show the difference in the amount of water that each soil is going to have available for your plant. And so that is the the most important factor when determining a potting mix that will best correlate with the variety that you are trying to grow. 
and it is how much water is going to be available to the plant and for how long after you water it. And if you tend to be an overwaterer, moving towards more um, pumice and looser, grittier mixes is great. If you tend to be an underwaterer and you're constantly finding things shriveled, you might want to um, mix a bit more of one of the um, heavier type, either store-bought succulent soil or mix up some of your own so that your watering habits can um, even out a little bit. And yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I think that's it for now. I will give you guys an update on these if I leave them out um, for a while. I'm pretty sure the pumice um, by tomorrow will be pretty much bone dry because that's been my experience um, with growing my lithops and stuff in it. I can give them a great soak which gives their root system a lovely bath but it doesn't hold a bunch of water so that they rot. Alrighty guys that's it for today. I hope you guys are having a fantastic um, start to your fall and winter season and happy growing.